In today's world, a person's name is generally only used as an identifying label, kind of like a number which can be changed to something else without any particular reason or value. However, in past history, names in many cultures held to a long-practiced tradition of providing information about the person themselves. For instance, Smith is the most common surname in the United States. It came from the Old English of Europe's Middle Ages and refers to the maker of something, particularly one who works with metals. A blacksmith is usually one who forges iron, while a whitesmith or tinsmith works with tin or other lighter materials. Wright is another common name, which came from the skill of making wooden objects. It also comes from the Old English meaning worker or maker, and is related to the word wrought, which uh, once served as the past participle of our verb for work. It's been used mostly in combination with other words to form such compounds as shipwright or wheelwright. A playwright doesn't make things out of wood, but certainly does make plays for the stage. And words such as cartwright, one who builds carts, and wainwright, one who makes wagons, are common last names as well. A cooper was a person who made repairs in wooden casks or tubs. A chamberlain was the servant who guarded or attended to a nobleman's sleeping chambers. And a fletcher was a maker of arrows from the Anglo-French fleche, meaning arrow. The term fletching is used for the aerodynamically designed wings called fins or veins that stabilize an arrow in flight. That's pretty interesting stuff, I think. This same tradition has been practiced for centuries by many cultures. And since my wife came from the Lakota descent, I found many other names to be interesting. Tatanka is a famous name made uh, so by a recent movie, which means uh, a buffalo or big beast. Uh, Takoda means a friend to everyone. Enape is one who roars bravely in the face of danger. Uh, Wanatan is one who attacks or charges. And Iawe means laughing maiden. I don't know if I can get into what that might mean at all. A chaske means the firstborn son or junior, as we might refer to it in our language. And uh, ti tonka means one who talks too much or big lodge. Uh, why would anyone name their child someone who talks too much? And uh, katoga means hole in the wall. Now, I had a hard time with that one. Why would anybody call their child hole in the wall? Whatever. I guess there's uh, various <laughs> terms for um, people, their names in every language. But anyway, in biblical times, names especially held significant meaning to describe uh, one's purpose, personality, or character. Uh, for instance, uh, let's look at these examples from God's Word, such as when God told Abraham, then 100 years old, that his 90-year-old wife, Sarah, would give birth to a son, Abraham, and Sarah laughed, as it says in Genesis 17, 17. Well, the Bible says Sarah went on to give birth to a son named Isaac, which means laughter. And I think the joke was on them, wasn't it? Uh, Isaac grew up to have twin sons. The first of the twin boys was named Esau, which means hairy, because of how hairy Esau was at birth in Genesis 25, 25. And the second of the twin sons was born grasping at Esau's heels and was thus named Jacob, which means that supplants in Genesis 25, 26. So true to his name, un unbeknown to his parents, Jacob would go on to rob his older brother Esau of their father's blessing of the firstborn rights in Genesis 27. He literally did supplant. And so Jacob thereafter would, would go on to wrestle with God, and he would be renamed Israel, 
which means one who wrestles with God in Genesis 32, 28. He indeed did wrestle with God. It was a fisherman called Simon, a name that means hear or, or obey, became one of the first people to hear Jesus call and become his disciple. Jesus changed Simon's name to Peter, meaning little rock. And when Peter correctly identified Jesus as the Son of God, Jesus blessed Peter and announced that he would build his church on, on his revelation of the great rock of Jesus. He would build his church uh, using the revelation of the little rock of the great rock, Matthew 16 and verse 18. The name of Christ himself also has great significance. <clears throat> the name Jesus re refers to Savior and Deliverer. When Mary conceived Jesus <clears throat> through the Holy Spirit, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and told Joseph to raise the child as his own and to name the child Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 18, verse 21. Jesus is our Savior, and it's his name, the one who saves us of our sins. But long before cultures adopted these kinds of methods to describe uh, the person by their name, God was the one who began it all by identifying himself by who he is and what he does. However, what single descriptive name could sum up the totality of who and what God is? That's a, that's a perplexity that uh, we're going to answer here today. The most frequent name God refers to himself in the Old Testament is formed by four Hebrew consonants, Yoda, He, Wa, and He, which we transliterate to the consonants, the letters Y-H, uh, W-H, often referred to as the tetragrammation or a transliteration of the four Hebrew consonants, usually pronounced as Yahweh. This is God's holy covenant name that he refers to himself, found 6,800 6, times in the Old Testament. The letters form a word or words that mean to be, and most scholars translate it as I am who I am, or I will be who I will be, or uh, the self-existent one. One such reference is found in Genesis, uh, Exodus chapter 3 that literally refers to this. In past centuries, during the Renaissance and Reformation periods, there was a debate over these consonants in the ancient Hebrew and their pronunciation, which is why they're rendered as Jehovah in older translations such as the King James Version. But in the 19th and 20th centuries, biblical scholars came into a more common agreement that Yahweh was the more accurate rendering, which will appear in many of our modern translations today. I am who I am is a powerful reference to God, but because of the height and depth of His fullness, that it is so great and unfathomable, He also extends His name by a variety of other titles and descriptions so that we, His people, might acquire a greater comprehension and understanding and trust of His infinite character, power, and supremacy. The best way that I can illustrate this is by people who have multiple talents and yet find it necessary to present their skills separately. Instead of Bob professing that he has every kind of skill, which is hard to grasp and maybe even hard to believe, he presents each skill separately to the current need at hand. If there's a leaky pipe, he presents himself as Bob the plumber. If there's an electrical name, uh, uh, need, his name becomes Bob the Electrician. Early Americans identified their surname by what they did in a similar way, such as a person named Jonathan Wainwright. His name was not only identified uh, by what he did so that everybody would know about it, 
but he was also putting his name and reputation on the line as now he couldn't escape the fact that he was a Wainwright or a wagon builder and everybody knew about it. It was his name. It's what he did. And his name professed the character and the reputation of his workmanship. This is like what God does by branding himself by, with what he does. When he refers to his name as Yahweh Rapha in Exodus 15, 26, which means I am the Lord that heals you, he is saying loud and clear, this is who I am. This is what I do. And you can trust the character and authority of who I am. As I will do exactly what my name says I will do. Isn't that awesome? As the psalmist says, And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 9 and verse 10. Now, as mentioned, the Bible refers to God as Yahweh 6,800 times and also refers to him as Elohim 2,600 times and Adonai 439 times and El 238 times. These are the, the basic root words for God used in the scriptures, the Old Testament. In all, there are about 100 variations of God's name, but most of the others are combinations of these basic names, such as El Shaddai or Yahweh Rapha. I want to go through just a few of these uh, to illustrate how this illuminates our understanding of him. And I have 14 references out of uh, uh, the many dozens that are referred to in Scripture. The first of which is Elohim, which means God in the plural. It's uh, used in the very first verse of Scripture in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God, or Elohim, plural, gods, created the heaven and the earth. El Elyon means God most high in the singular sense, as used in Genesis 14, 18 through 20. El Roi means God who sees. He is the one who is all-knowing, uh, as used in uh, Genesis 16, 13 through 14. Uh, there's nothing that gets beyond God's awareness and his knowledge. He sees it all. El Shaddai is, means God the Almighty or God the All-Sufficient One as it, it's used in Genesis 17, uh, 2 through, through 3. Uh, our God is Almighty. He is capable of doing anything. There is nothing that He cannot do that is within His ability. Uh, the word Yahweh, the, the, the name that we've already referred to, it means I am who I am, or I will be who I will be, or the self-existent one. As God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you will say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you, Exodus 3 through 14. Uh, the name Adonai means Lord. As it says in Scripture, then Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before you, since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow in speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have I not the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and teach you what you shall say in Exodus 4, 10 through 12. I have referred to this passage so many times in that um, uh, Moses was called to speak for the Lord, but yet he saw his inability and his limitations. And yet God reminded him that he's the one who makes men's mouth. He's the one who makes abilities. And all he wanted for Moses to do was respond and obey. I, when I was called to the ministry, I didn't have any speaking ability, at least in the public sense. And uh, it, I felt the same way. But God uh, called me and, uh, and he has get, helped me and given me an ability to speak uh, uh, not great, but uh, to get along in the years that I have served in ministry over the years. Uh, 
Yahweh Jireh is another of the names that God uses of himself, or Yahweh will provide, or I am the Lord that will provide. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand upon the lad, that is his son Isaac, or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided, in Genesis 20 through 11 through 14. This, of course, is a reference to, to Isaac, that God called to Abraham to sacrifice his son to the Lord. And he did uh, he, such, in, he went forward in obedience, reluctantly, but in obedience, to sacrifice his son as the Lord had uh, commanded him to do. But before that happened, the Lord held back his hand and showed that he had provided a substitute sacrifice. It, this was an example of Jesus who has been the sacrifice for us uh, in our behalf for our sin. And uh, this beautiful story uh, tells us how that God will provide and uh, it may get down to the last minute. It may get, get down to the last dime or dollar. But God will provide for those who will trust him, trust the nature of his name because it's who he is. It's what he does. He is the Lord who provides. He will provide for you. He will provide the sacrifice. He will provide uh, your, your provisions, your needs, the, the food, the money, the rent. God is the provider if you will trust him and put your confidence in him. Another name, Yahweh Nisai. Yahweh is my banner. Uh, this is, is a reference to after winning a battle with God's assistant, assistance, Moses built an altar and named it Yahweh is my banner. Exodus 17 verse 16. He is, the, he is the name above our name. He is the one who represents us, who fights for us, who uh, goes to work in our behalf to help us. Uh, he is our banner. Uh, Yahweh Mekodeshem means Yahweh who sanctifies you. The Bible says, and Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, but as for you, speak to the sons of Israel saying, you shall surely observe my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am Yahweh who sanctifies you. The word sanctify means to set aside, to make special, uh, to put his, his hand upon, his brand upon. Uh, he makes us different and special because he forgives us, he washes us, he makes us his people. Our God is the one who sanctifies us and sets us apart for him to be his special people in Exodus 31 through 12, uh, which I read um, from that passage. Yahweh Shalom is another name, which means Yahweh is peace or God is peace. Now Gideon perceived the scripture that he was the angel of the Lord, it says. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace, in Judges 6, 23-24. You know, Gideon was, uh, in many ways, kind of slow to come to terms with... Uh, who and what God was, but once he got it, he got a good grip on it, and he came to understand who the Lord indeed was. And God revealed himself to Gideon by telling him, He is the Lord, our peace. And he is your peace today. He is the, it is what he does. It's, it's what he, he does. It's who he is. He will provide peace to you if you allow him to be uh, what he is to you in your heart when you're all alone, when you're struggling, when you're going through crises, let him be your peace because it's his personality, it's his character, it's his nature. 
He brings peace wherever he is, and he will bring peace to your heart as well. Uh, Yahweh Sabaoth, which means Yahweh of hosts. Uh, host is a reference to the uh, army of angels who serve God, and the Lord of, of hosts is with us, the Bible says in Psalm 46 and through 7. He is the God of, of Jacob and is our reference, the scripture says. He is the God of hosts. He commands the forces of heaven. All power is given to him. He is mighty. He is uh, all uh, uh, able to do anything that we need done in our life to protect us, to protect us from Satan, to protect us from the, the plagues and the problems of this world. Anything. God is the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. Yahweh Ra, which means Yahweh my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, it says in the 23rd Psalm, I shall not want. And many of us, we can quote this, that he leads us beside the still waters. He restores our soul. We, we go on, he is, the, he, he is there with us and walks with us in, in the valley of the shadow of death that we do not have to fear evil because he is our shepherd. He is with us. He stands with us. He walks with us. Yahweh Rapha, as we have already mentioned, means the Lord who heals. Yahweh who heals. The word of God says, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, he says, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptian, for I am the Lord who heals you. In Exodus 15, 26, this is where this is, is used. When I went through uh, COVID some time back and was very, very sick, uh, I went back to this uh, terminology in this passage and the references to healing many times in scriptures and I was reminded that the Lord says that it's his name he says I am the Lord who heals you that is his name it's what he does he will do that for you because it's his character it's his personality it's who he is he will not only do this for you it's his name he will heal you because it's who he is and what he does and you can bank on it. Oh, and we can trust him to pro provide for us and to do the things that his name declares that he is. Also, another name that he uses for himself, Yahweh Sitkinu, which means Yahweh our righteousness or saving justice. As the scripture says, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise a... a to David a branch of righteousness, a king shall reign and prof prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is his name by which he will be called the Lord our righteousness as it says in Jeremiah 23 verses 5 through 6. And he is the Lord our righteousness. It is his name. It's who he is. It's what he does. He brings righteousness in our life. He saves us of our sins. He forgives us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness and brings righteousness into our life because it's who he is. It's what he does. And we can bank on that and trust his character and trust who he is that he says to our life. Well, I hope these terms mean something special to you and encourage you like they encourage me, that we understand in a greater way the character and the nature of God through the names that he describes himself. And uh, what we understand today is our God will provide and help us and answer our prayers and, and Jesus will save us and help us and heal us and all of these things that we describe today. Which brings me to the place that I want to pray for you. We have so many needs to pray for. We, we've got to pray for a nation. And uh, we continue to bring that out. Pray for our leaders. I may not agree with the leaders that have been elected in recent times. 
but I pray for them daily that God will not only save them, but also direct them to do the right things, even against perhaps uh, what they might be inclined to do. You know, God can direct the hand of the king regardless of who that is. And there are those who may not have it in their heart to do what God wants them to do, but he can make them do it anyway. And for our nation who desperately needs God's help, we've got to pray for those in leadership. We've got to pray for, for our nation. We're not doing this necessarily as a favor to them. We're doing it for the, for the benefit of all of us, that God would help our nation by leading and guiding and and putting his hand upon those in, in high places. We've got to pray for those who are still struggling with COVID. And folks, uh, this thing may be with us for a long time to come. And many talk about getting back to normal, but I don't know if there is any such thing as going back to normal. And frankly, I hope not, because normal was not doing well in our nation. Uh, normal uh, was a place where people took God for granted, took their health, and the lives of their loved ones for granted. And in this crisis, many have been brought to a greater appreciation, a greater love. Uh, and I, I pray that it will bring them to their knees in, into a greater dimension of faith and, and uh, submission to God. And I, I want to pray today for those of you that are struggling. And I thank you so much for those of you that have prayed for us and supported us and stood with us. I want to pray for you that God would help you. Let's agree together briefly today. Our Father in heaven, I lift up my brothers and sisters to you, those who stand with us uh, today in this program. And I pray that, Lord, that you would minister back into their lives, uh, bring to their lives the very dimensions of the names that you describe yourself, provide for them, be their healer, be their peace, be their righteousness, because, Lord, it's who you are. It's what you do. And I pray that, Lord, that you will meet the needs of your people, provide for those who are struggling financially. And Lord, I ask you to bring our nation back to you. Oh God, we ask you for a miracle for America. Bring America back to you. Bring America to its knees in repentance. And I ask, Lord, today, if there is one that does not know you, that is watching here this morning, that they would call upon you and ask you to come into their heart just by saying, forgive me, Lord Jesus, of my sins and my transgressions. Come into my heart. That's all that it takes, my friends. And Jesus will hear and he will answer and he will uh, bring his Holy Spirit to, to be born, to be dwell, and to dwell in your heart and your life. If you do that, please write me and tell me, send a message uh, through one of the methods through our, our website or Facebook or YouTube. Let us know about that and we'll continue to pray with you and continue to stand with you in faith. Well, today, uh, Jerry and I, we just want to thank you so much for being a part of our family, our extended family across this country and, and even around the world. We have friends who are joining with us and watching with us. <clears throat> so until next week, same time, please join us again and uh, come uh, and uh, worship the Lord with us and spend these few moments as we, we honor the Lord together on uh, next Sunday morning, same time. God bless you. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.